Hey, this is Joe with Grow Up Building. Today I'm going to tell you how to make compost, a complete tutorial. So you've probably heard that uh, compost is a gardener's best friend. It's the absolute best thing you can use to fertilize flowers, trees, shrubs, vegetables. Um, I even like top dress it on my lawn in the wintertime uh, just to add some organic matter. It? It's just all around good stuff. The broken down uh, organic matter is full of nutrients that are slow release. The plants take them when they need them. You can break up hard, compacted clay soil with compost. Uh, you can, it'll make it drain better. You can also add it to sandy soil to make it hold water better. There's really like, this is like the universal best awesome thing you could possibly have to add to any kind of plant. They all love it. Um, now I am a member of a lot of uh, gardening groups and internet forums and a lot of times when someone gets on there and they're a newbie and they ask, how do I start composting? They often get bombarded with a lot of technical information and it's like some people just like to make stuff so much more complicated than it needs to be. So I compost in the most simple way possible and I've been doing it for four or five years. I make a lot of compost every year and I'm going to show you, I'm going to tell you all the basics of composting, what to use, what not to use, how much, all that. And then I'm going to actually build a pile from scratch and we can see it break down. Now I'm not trying to set any, set any uh, speed records of composting faster than anyone else. but. Um, I do it fairly passively and it works great. So let's get into it. Okay, so to make compost, you need four basic ingredients for the bacteria to get going. You need some green material that's like green and leafy. That's your nitrogen source. You need something that's kind of uh, papery, like cardboard or newspaper. That's your brown material. You need to have some water. It needs to be moist, but not soggy wet. And then you also need a little bit of air in there. And with those four ingredients, you'll get the good bacteria to break down your comp and your stuff and make a compost very quickly. Um, now, what green materials do you need? Okay, so kitchen scraps of pretty much any kind, if it's coming from a plant, is okay. Um, you know, apple cores, banana peels, they're all great. Um, grass clippings are about the best green material there is for getting it hot quickly. And another one that's good is coffee grounds, which, uh, uh, it's quite regularly used, but any kind of green leafy yard waste will work fine as well. Um, you know, it's just keep it plant based and you'll be OK. Um, you can also use egg and shrimp shells, but not the egg or shrimp. But anyways, let's jump to brown materials. So this is like regular paper newspaper, uh, cardboard, regular cardboard that doesn't have paint on it or tape or stickers or anything and sawdust. I love sawdust as compost because of all the surface area it already has. You know, it's kind of like pre-shredded. And then dried leaves, um, you know, in the fall. Those are great brown material to use as well. Now, the, what you should never compost or not compost is anything that's glossy from the brown stuff. So, uh, like this cardboard here is glossy reflecting light. That stuff's not going to break down very well, and I don't know what kind of chemicals could or could not be in that. Also, the uh, high glossy newspaper inserts you get in the mail, I stay away from those. Um, and then anything that's not plant-based, uh, like meats and cheeses, um, you know, don't do it. It's, uh, it, I mean, it'll break down, but it's going to take a long time, and it's probably going to attract some raccoons or other animals that maybe you don't want tearing up your pile in the process. Um, okay, so... Uh, me, I compost on the ground, and I usually have three piles going. All right, so my first pile is the one that I add to, and I continually add to it every couple of days. Every time I fill up my little silver bucket in the kitchen, it's coming out here right onto there. Um, next, I have my pile that is basically completely done, and this stuff is what I can take from and use. I can store some in buckets if I want. Um, you know, it's all good. And then I have my third pile, which is almost there. Um, so there's still organic matter in this, but it's just not quite fully done. So I'll leave this one to the worms to finish off. I'll turn it once a week, and that's about it. Now, I'm a big proponent of keeping your compost on the ground because um, the worms will find it. So even if it's not if it's not hot composting at the, at the moment, the worms will come in here and help break down um, remaining organic matter. So that's just kind of a big benefit of keeping it on the ground if your situation allows for it. Um, I'm a big fan of it. Okay, so we are going to start a brand new compost pile. And this was all filmed on May 3rd, 2020. And let's get started on it. Um, so I've got all my materials and I saved them up for this video. I've got around two and a half gallons of kitchen scraps, which, you know, normally I just take them out as I accumulate them. I don't normally store them, but um, I also had a bunch of grass clippings I saved from mowing the lawn the day before. 
And again, these are like the best thing in the world for uh, nitrogen source. For my brown materials, I'm going to be using, um, this is like that packing paper from Amazon. So I'll tear this up into strips. Um, that's excellent stuff. And then I have a whole bunch of, uh, you know, brown stuff that I just store in my basement. Every time I get a package from Amazon or Christmas time, I just, I spend an hour just tearing stuff up into little strips and save it. Um, it really comes in handy, which we'll talk about further later. Uh, but in addition to that, um, and this is something, if you know a woodworker or you are one yourself, your sawdust is an outstanding source of uh, brown material. I love it because it's such a, it, it's already like so shredded up. It's sawdust. It's complete surface area. It, it's excellent. Um, so to build a pile, what do you do? Well, you've probably heard this before, but I'm going to repeat it anyways. You start with layers. You layer your browns, then your greens, then your browns, then your greens, and you keep doing it. Um, this is just the easiest way to kind of get that going. Um, and so I'm using all my materials that I showed you here today. Normally I just use whatever's available, but, uh, anyways, uh, you know, you just constantly mix them up and you'll notice that, uh, my sawdust and my cardboard are pretty dry. So I'm gonna have to add water here in a bit. But, uh, as I mix though, you'll also notice that I'm stirring it up as I go. I don't leave it as layers. You know, this stuff wasn't meant to be separated. It's meant to be mixed. So that's how I do it. Um, so mix them thoroughly as you're doing this. Um, it's, uh, you know, getting it all together is going to be better that way. Um, you know, a bunch of brown material segregated from the green material isn't going to do anything. So, and while you're doing this, as you're building your pile, water it. Um, and it's mainly to water the brown material. So, you know, the sawdust is dry, the cardboard's dry. It needs to get um, about as wet as a wrung out sponge. And uh, before I forget, what I try to target for my proportions is 50% green, 50% brown. That usually seems to be the best target, but don't get hung up on that. Like, if you're a little too far one way or the other, you can always supplement it with just adding more green later or just turning it more frequently if you have too much green. In fact, you really should. Um, just because as the green material breaks down um, and, and it kind of compresses itself, it'll eventually get to a place where there's no air. And uh, if there's no air, then the bad bacteria will take over. And we'll see a special case of that with the grass clippings here in a couple of minutes. Um, but uh, you don't want that to happen because that's the anaerobic bacteria taking over. It breaks stuff down. It just takes forever and it's sludgy and mucky and it's slow. So anyways, and you've probably also noticed me grabbing a handful of my compost from a you know, my old pile and throwing it in there. And that's just kind of to jump start with the good bacteria. If you don't have a compost uh, pile to take from, use a handful of soil from your yard or garden. It'll do just the same. The, bacteri the bacteria is already there. Um, and just putting it into your uh, newly formed compost pile is just going to jump start everything a little quicker. Um, but that's it though. I mean, it's just uh, layer, mix, water, layer, mix, water, rinse and repeat. Um, but, uh, Anyways, as you can see, I'm making quite a big pile. This one's going to have no problem heating up. Um, but uh, I make as big a pile as I have material, green material available. So if I don't have much green material, I don't sweat it. I just, I add it anyways, even if it's smaller. Um, again, I'm on the ground. The worms are going to give me an assist with forming uh, worm castings. So, okay. So I'm, on the, I'm in a unique situation. This is what it looks like halfway across my yard. You can kind of see the compost piles back there by the forest. From my house, you really can't make it out so well. Um, so I'm in a unique position, and I understand that most people may not be, and they may want to make like a pallet fence or something to kind of hide the compost or get a tumbler. But I understand that, but I just wanted to show that. Okay, this is May 5th. The compost pile is two days old, and I came out here one morning to add another bucket of uh, kitchen scraps, and she's smoking, and it's hot, and I like it. That's what we want to see. That's all that nitrogen breaking down from the bacteria. The bacteria kind of basically, they basically pass gas and uh, that's what heats up everything. Um, as far as I understand, they give off heat and uh, air. Now, anyways, uh, I came, I ran back in and grabbed my uh, infrared uh, thermometer. I don't have one of those big uh, thermometers for temperature probes, so I have to uh, uh, use this. But anyways, the ground surrounding the pile is 60 Fahrenheit and we'll check the temperature inside. Um, and, uh, yeah, it, it's a good sign when you can see it steaming as soon as you turn it, you know, and, and it's hot to touch in the middle there. I mean, you'll figure that out real quick, but okay. 
So after being exposed to the air for a couple minutes, it's still 118 Fahrenheit. So that's pretty good. I know they target 150, but I don't have a way to measure that. So, and I, actually there, it went above 130. So it's probably close to 150 inside the pile. Just once you expose it to air, that changes. Um, and before I forget, um, I, all the information I'm telling you here is at, available at an article on our website, which I will link to in the description. So if you want to get a quick reference after watching this video and like maybe you're outstanding by your pile, you can pull up that article instead of sitting through a whole video trying to find where I talk about something specific. It's just faster. Um, but uh, anyways, uh, yeah, so I just keep mixing it. And with grass, you really, really, really need to mix it daily. Uh, because it breaks down so quickly that the grass is going to want to mat up and layer up on you. And when that happens, um, if it goes into sludge form where it's the anaerobic bacteria, it's, I mean, you can get, get it back, but it's not very fun to do so. Uh, so, okay, now we're five days old. It is still smoking, still, or steaming, I should say. So again, a good sign. Uh, there's not as much grass visible and it's still very, very hot though in the middle. So there it's been exposed to the air for about five ten seconds and let's see what it says 128 Fahrenheit so it's pretty hot in there yet so that's excellent that's what I want to see um, and again you have to keep turning this stuff though and you don't just flip it once or twice I mean I I really mix it up I'm not showing you all the footage because I mean it gets boring just watching someone turn a pile but uh, anyways I and again I keep adding more and more green stuff to my pile as I go um, but uh, keep turning it keep mixing it because as the grass starts to uh, layer up and it'll kind of form like little balls that'll you can almost peel them apart like uh, pages in a book um, which I kind of found some here this kind of shows it um, I mean I didn't let it get bad so but you can see how I'm, I'm just separating it almost like pages in a book this will turn into sludge if I'm not careful what you're about to see right here is footage from a year ago, a pile that I neglected and had way too much green material, way too much grass, and it's basically like, looks like mud, but it's really just stinky grass that's broken down and anaerobic bacteria has taken over. Um, you know, to fix that, you gotta dry it out and uh, just mix up a bunch of other stuff and keep it going, get, let the, uh, the good bacteria take over. Okay, so now we're 12 days old, and again, it's still pretty hot in there, that's good. And it's breaking down, everything's going nice. Uh, you know, this, this process really happens fast. Like it, it's, you don't notice it day after day, but when you put all this footage together, it gets uh, pretty interesting to look at. Um, but again, you just have to keep doing it. Now I did notice here that I couldn't see any of my brown material anymore. So I didn't really notice much sawdust. I didn't notice much of the cardboard or paper. So I went to my stash of brown material, which I keep excess amounts of. And I came out here and just dumped it all on there again, just to mix it up and, uh, you know, try to prevent the bad bacteria from taking over. Um, and again, mix it thoroughly, you know. You know, this is May 15th, so in two weeks, all my brown material is gone. Most of my grass is unrecognizable. My kitchen scraps are some you can recognize, some you can't. Uh, if we come back to June 3rd, so now we are one month old. This is the pile. But wait, it's not a pile. What is it? Well... You're probably asking, like, well, don't animals come attack your pile? Well, apparently they did the night before. So I must have dumped some uh, something sweet out here that something wanted to get at. And this is what a destroyed pile looks like. So it's spread out about six foot diameter. It's really not a big deal um, where I, you know, for me, because you can break this stuff up really easily. I mean, I just came out to put in some more kitchen scraps. And, uh, you know, there we go. I'm pretty much done with my pile again. It's... Uh, it's fully formed so it's not a big deal for me to clean it up okay we're at June 12th and I'm getting really close to calling this pile done enough you know to where I'm not going to add to it anymore you really can't see much grass in here at all you can't hardly recognize much of anything I mean there is stuff stuff present because I continually add stuff to the pile but by and large man this is uh, this is looking pretty good uh, so I'm quite pleased and uh, Again, we'll come back here again about six days later and take a look again. And this is June 18th, and I am essentially done with this. Uh, there's nothing else to really do except wait. Wait for the worms to kind of get in there and finish the job for me. Um, so that's always a good feeling. It, it, you know, This stuff is broken down. This is broken down enough to use, although you'd probably want to separate the stuff that was visibly green or sticks or whatnot. But uh, 
And I, I apologize, I didn't have footage of 10 days later, I just had a couple of pictures, but this is the pile and it's like done. So it's just shy of two months. Um, and again, this is not working too hard at making compost, but I've made excellent looking compost and I'm done. So, all right, what's some tips and lessons learned that I've uh, acquired over my years of doing this? The first one is keep it simple. And don't be hung up on, you know, CN ratios. Just try to go 50-50 by volume and uh, take it from there, you know. You're going to learn by doing this more than anything else. Um, you know, you can watch a million YouTube videos, read a, a thousand articles on this, and you're not going to learn nearly as much as just going out and trying it on your own. Um, but, uh, you know, Mother Nature breaks down organic matter all, every day of the year and she doesn't care what your C to N ratio is. It just, it matters how much time it's gonna take. Um, the next tip is just, you know, as far as what materials, if it came from a plant, it's okay to use um, in general. Um, you know, it, if it's grass clippings, if it's from a plant, you know, if it's from an animal, don't use it unless we're talking about shrimp shells or eggshells, then it's okay. And then I do have to talk a little bit more about worms. So, I mean, I love the worms in my uh, compost, but I have a somewhat, I won't say it's that unique, but I have the Asian jumping worms in my area. And I have them here, and they're voracious little eaters. So they make my stuff, you know, whatever I have left over once the compost cools off, they turn it into uh, worm castings very quickly, probably quicker than uh, if you didn't have them. So that's just something I have to live with. But anyways, uh, you know, and again, if you guys have any questions on this stuff, please just ask in the uh, comments, though. I mean, I'm, I like trying to answer them. I'll do my best on this. But, uh, you know, the big thing, though, is if you are going to use grass clippings, though, because a lot of you probably will, just make sure you turn it every day for the first week or two, you know, until it, there's really no chance of it matting up. And you just want to avoid this black sludge stuff, you know. That's the cold compost, the dreaded cold compost that nobody wants to deal with. So... In summary, on this topic, what do we got? Well, um, we're going to try to use 50-50 green to brown material by volume. Um, and again, you always want to keep an excess amount of brown material on hand. That way, if it goes too much to the green, you can always add brown. It's easy to store brown because it's just cardboard. Um, turn the stuff frequently. Keep an eye on the moisture. If it doesn't feel like a wrung out sponge, um, then you want to uh, add some. And uh, if you can keep the pile on the ground, you should do so. I mean, you might get a little benefit from the worms like I do. Uh, that's a good thing. And, uh, you know, it helps speed everything along. But uh, anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Um, this will be part of a large playlist on soil building, soil testing, vegetable gardening that I'll make in the coming months as I release more videos. But I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, thank you guys very much.